Hello and welcome to this video on distance time graphs presented by Mr Freeman's Fundamental Physics. A distance time graph is a graph that shows how far an object's moved and the time that this travel took. You can see here two simple distance time graphs, one that tracks ABC and one that tracks D. Here at A we can see that the object is moving at a constant speed because the distance changes at a linear rate. B, the distance doesn't change, so the object isn't moving or it's stationary, it's staying still. At C, the object is again moving at a steady speed, that's a straight line, but it's moving back to where it started from, its distance is going back to zero. Whereas D is also a steady speed because it's a straight line, but D is slightly faster than A, and we can tell this because it's steeper. And we can see that it covers more distance in the same amount of time when compared to A. And here we have a similar graph, but with two curves added. What the curve shows is a changing speed. A straight line shows a constant speed, a curve shows a changing speed. E, where the gradient is getting steeper, shows that the object is speeding up. And F, where the curve is getting shallower, shows the object is slowing down. So let's look at some questions I could ask you. Here we've got a simple distance time graph. It shows the short journey of a cat chasing a mouse. Um, they can ask you some simple questions that aren't going to involve too much working out and you just pull the information from the graph. So here the first question says how far does a cat travel? We can see the furthest distance it travels is 30 metres. For how long is a cat stationary? The cat is stationary between 4 and 6 seconds, so stationary for 2 seconds. When is a cat running the fastest? Well, we've just said the steeper the line, the faster the steady speed. So between two and four seconds is when it's going the fastest. And how long does it take the cat to run 10 meters? Well, if we look at where 10 meters is on the graph, that took two seconds to reach that time. So it's two seconds. We can also be asked to find speed, to calculate speed from a distance time graph. There's three ways really they can ask you to do this. They can ask you to find speed when the object is travelling at a steady speed. They can ask you to find speed when the object is changing speed. Or they could ask you to find the average speed. If it's a steady speed, we calculate the gradient of the slope. If it's a changing speed, we have to work out a tangent to the line and then find the gradient of that tangent. And if it's average speed, it's just a straightforward speed equation, change in distance divided by the time taken. So let's look at an example of calculating the speed from the gradient when objects traveling at steady speed. Here we've got four clear sections. We've got a section of steady speed, constant speed, steady speed, and an end section of constant speed. To find the gradient of a slope, we have to find how much the y-axis changes and divide it by how much the x-axis changes. So here we just indicate the y-axis and the x-axis for that section of the graph. And then we work out what that journey ends at and what that journey started at. So here on the y-axis, it ended at 5 metres and it started at 0. On the x-axis, it started ended at 4 seconds started at zero. So the change in y in this instance is five and the change in x is four. And five divided by four gives us a 1.25 meters per second as a speed. A second section of the graph here is a flat line. So we know with, without any calculations that this is stationary. It's not moving. Yep, so the speed here is zero meters per second. And on the third section here, this involves a little bit more thought because we've got to work out the gradient triangle 
for just that section of the graph. So it's not 10 divided by 10. It's just this section of the graph. It starts on the y-axis, so it ends at 10 and started at 5. So it changes by 5. And on the x-axis, it ends at 10 and starts at 7. So 10 take away 7 gives us 3. And then we put that into the equation, changing y divided by changing x to give us a gradient, which will give us the speed. And that's 5 divided by 3, which is going to give us 1.6 recurring. And here we have a, another example. It's the same graph we looked at before, but this time we've got questions asking us to find the speed. So we're going to have to find the gradient of the slope. We know the gradient is changing y over changing x. So for the two questions, we've got to work out how much y changes, how much x changes, and just simply put them into the equation. So the first question here says, how fast does a cat run during the first two seconds? So we mark on the graph to work out the change in y and the change in x. And we see that y ended at 10, started at 0. 10 take away 0 is 10. And along the x, it started Ended at 2, started at 0, 2 take away 0 is 2. And then we can put those numbers into our equation. Changing y divided by changing x gives us 10 divided by 2. That gives us a speed of 5 metres per second. And the second question, how fast does a cat run between 2 and 4 seconds? Again, like the example we saw before, it isn't just 30 divided by 4. We've got to work out the gradient triangle for that section of the graph. So y ended at 30, started at 10, so it changed by 20. And x ended at 4, started at 2, so the journey there took 2 seconds. So we've got a change in y equals 20, a change in x equals 2. 20 divided by 2 equals 10 meters per second. And a similar example here, we see a graph that shows a mouse walking towards some cheese, resting to eat the cheese and then running away when he sees a local cat. First question, how does fast does the mouse walk during the first two seconds? Here we've got a graph, it's asking us about speed. We know we've got to work out the gradient changing y divided by changing x. We mark on the graph our gradient triangle. We can work out that y changed by 4, 4 take away 0, and along the x-axis ended at 2, started at 0, it's a change of 2. So if we put those numbers into the equation, that gives us 4 divided by 2, so it gives us a speed of 2 metres per second. The second question, how long does a mouse take to eat the cheese? Well, that's a stationary part of the graph. That's a flat line. That was between two and seven seconds. So it's five seconds altogether that he was stationary for. And the last question, how fast does the mouse run away? That's the last section. You see the graph goes down. So he's running back to where he started from. We've still got to look at the gradient triangle. When this journey ended at zero meters and it started at four so it's zero take away four so it's minus four his displacement is minus four meters the time ended at eight started at seven so that's still one second eight take away seven and here then we put the numbers into the equation changing y over changing x we get minus four over one and that gives us minus four meters per second so we've looked there, looked at the vector quantity. We've really worked out velocity rather than speed because we've given the direction as well. So we're indicating that he's running back towards the starting place with the minus sign there. So you may get asked to find the speed whilst the object's speeding up or slowing down. So obviously this is a curve on the graph. What we have to do here is we have to draw what we call a tangent to the curve. So if, say, for example, we're asked to find the, the speed at seven seconds, we look at the, where the curve matches seven seconds, and we line up our ruler and draw a straight line. 
that best matches that curve, that's closest to the curve at that point. So we draw a straight line, that's called a tangent. We then find the gradient of that tangent. So we go through all the principles that we've just looked at. We, we draw on there a gradient triangle. We find out how much the y-axis is changed by, find out how much the x-axis is changed by, and then we use the same equation that we have done, change in y, divided by the change in x to give us the gradient, and that gives us the speed at that instantaneous moment. We can make the triangle at any point along that line, but I like to make it nice and big. Although this is just a sketch, we can pick out values. You can see that the x, x axis is changed by 5 seconds and the distance on the y axis is changed by 2.5. So in our equation, we put change in y, 2.5, divided by the change in x, which is 5. 2.5 divided by 5 is going to give us 0.5 meters per second at that instant in time, at 7 seconds. And we use the same skill if we're asked to find the speed at a different time. We just draw our tangent to the curve at that particular time. So here, for example, nine seconds. And then we just use the equation, changing y over changing x for a gradient triangle drawn for that straight line there. And here we can see an example question using this. Graph below shows a dog following a cat. The dog follows for a while, sits down to scratch, and then accelerates to chase the cat. You can see the curve. How fast is a dog running after seven seconds? So after seven seconds, if we look at the graph, it's accelerating, it's curved, so we need to draw a tangent to the line and then find the gradient triangle of that tangent. So first thing to do is to draw the tangent as best we can to the steepness of the curve at that particular point. And then, as before, we can take our gradient triangle from any points. I like to make it big, and I like to pick some simple, straightforward points to make the maths easy for myself. So here along the bottom, I'm going to pick 9 and 4 for my change in x. And then I draw a line up from there until it meets the, the line. So my y-axis, you'll see here, is ends at 5.2 and started at 1.7. So I've got a change on the y-axis of 5.2, take away 1.7, 3.5 metres, and a change in the x-axis of 9, take away 4, so that's 5 seconds. I then put those numbers into the gradient equation, change in y over change in x is 3.5 divided by 5. Put that in the calculator and that gives me 0.7 metres per second at 7 seconds. So here we see if we could look at some potential exam questions. Use a distance time graph to answer the following questions. Calculate and compare the speed labelled A. It's the green line and the purple line there. Which section shows an object not moving and how long is it stationary for? And calculate the speed labelled C. So pause the video and have a go and we'll check back in a minute. Okay. So here we have to calculate and compare the speeds labelled A. We'll start off with the green line there. We'll work out the change in Y. 8 take away 0 is 8. And then we'll look at the change in X. 4 take away 0 gives us 4. Put those numbers into the gradient equation. 8 divided by 4 gives us 2 metres per second. Then we look at the purple line. And we go through the same process. We work out the change in Y. It's 10. And the change in X. 2. We put those numbers into the equation. 10 divided by 2 gives us 5 metres per second. That's the calculations done. And then compare the speeds. Reasonably straightforward. The purple line is travelling faster than the green line. And we can visually see that as well because it's clearly steeper. Question 2. Which section shows an object not moving and how long is it stationary for? Well, on a distance time graph, a flat line on the graph shows it's not moving, so it has to be section B. How long is the stationary for? Well, if we look at the time the stationary ends and the time the stationary starts, it ends at seven seconds, started at three seconds, so it must have lasted for four seconds. 
And the third question then, calculate the speed labelled C. So it's going back, so we know it's going to be a negative speed because it's going back to where it started from. So we work out the change in Y, ends at 0, started at 8, so that's minus 8. And the X axis is 10 take away 7, that's 3 seconds. Put those into our gradient equation, change in Y divided by change in X, and that gives us minus 8 divided by 3 is minus 2.67 meters per second. Well done if you got those correct, and now it's your turn on your own. Okay, and here we have another distance time graph. It shows a section of Jeff's car ride. We're going to look at some questions using this graph. The first question, how fast does Jeff travel in the first four seconds? Second question, how far does he travel altogether? Third is, for how long does he stop? And the fourth question is, how fast does he travel in the last four seconds? Okay, good luck with these. Thanks for watching this video on distance time graphs, and I hope you found it useful.